Good morning. Welcome to the EU Singapore Dialogue on Climate Change. The topic to be discussed today is another one of great importance, both in Singapore and in the EU focusing on shared concerns and opportunities in relation to climate action. We are very happy to see so many countries, including our own Singapore, strive to link the recovery from the pandemic to longer term economic transitions and to low carbon futures. Singapore is committed to push for a green recovery from COVID-19, one that supports a transition to a more sustainable low carbon and climate resilient future. We look forward to working with the European Union to support global efforts to build a better future for all. Today, in spite of the crisis that we are facing, we should not only maintain our climate ambitions, but double down on them. The Green Deal is also Europe's growth strategy and it is also our roadmap out of this crisis. It's a lifeline to a better future. That without the impact of the pandemic, we would not have had the volume of a, a stimulus uh, that we will have for a green and blue restart that we are seeing now deployed by the EU, Singapore, which is here, and many other nations. And also that the ambition of the pledges is increasing. Uh, if you want to, to reach carbon neutrality by 2050, uh, you need to start uh, now and the more you delay, the sharpest the slope would be in order to reach this, this, uh, this uh, neutrality by 250. We are really looking at the panic pandemic as an opportunity to build better and greener and we are really putting in place any policies that will try to engine, uh, facilitate this transition. And we have a fantastic lever which takes place in the archipelago of the global cities of the world, which is the global finance, and that is looking for ways to finance the carbon. And we are seeing another connection there. From my perspective, um, scientific perspective, what's done in watersheds and in urban environments, you know, eventually makes its way to the coast. It's just not the designer or the architect, it's everyone in the whole value stream, including the subcontractors, the suppliers, the government agencies, all have to come uh, together as one. Uh, MAS is also looking at itself investing its own fund, setting up a specific fund uh, of about uh, 2 billion Singapore dollars that will be specifically focused on these ESG driven investments and that will use uh, ESG criteria as uh, one of the key uh, parameters for investment decisions. So with a lot of these uh, developments or harmonization, we think it will be important uh, to track and then implementation of course will be key. Implementation itself is tricky and requires investments of resources. How to accelerate the transition. So if we say, okay, out here we have higher obstacles, how do we leverage what, like these, these, these new opportunities, how do we leverage that to create an accelerated transition to decarbonized de economy? And that's, that would be where the big, uh, the science-driven big data comes in. Poverty alleviation is a, is a big goal and uh, fossil fuels still play a big role in emission uh, economic activity. So yeah, so it's, it's a bit of a mix, uh, David, that will have to be done and uh, maybe cherry pick some of the elements and maybe ride on new taxonomy and maybe uh, pick some of those elements which work here. We look forward to continuing our work on sustainability, on ESG, green finance and other things we've talked about. And we hope that this will be helpful to all the investors and the companies in the resource sector. I hope today's discussions will provide a folder for even more dialogue and collaboration opportunities between Europe and Singapore. Have a good day and keep well and stay safe.